All right, so let's go ahead and get in here and create a song. You notice when I click create new song, it shows me a list under my user tab of all my templates. This is really useful when you want to get in here and start from a certain point every time, obviously. Then we've got a bunch of options in here that we can set, like sample rate, resolution. All this stuff is really basic. You, you, you know what to put in there. Then we got the option to stretch audio files to song tempo. That's super useful. I always keep that on. And then play overlaps. You know, that's another pretty cut and dry feature right there. If you have two regions and they're overlapping and you want them to play, then you want this option on. If you don't want those to overlap and play, you'd want that off. All right, so let's go ahead and put a name in here and create a new song. So this is the first thing we're going to see when we open up a new song, obviously. And the first thing I want to cover is the toolbar. All of these are linked to key commands, which are the, the numbers above your typing keyboard. So um, if you have a keyboard that's got a number key section on the right, and then obviously you've got your numbers above the letters, uh, these tools are only able to be controlled with the ones above the letters. So keep that in mind. Uh, you'll notice when I point to them, each one tells me what it is. So we got arrow tool, range tool, split tool. I like to call that the slice tool. Uh, we got the eraser tool, pen tool or paint tool, uh, mute tool, bend tool, and listen tool. And you'll see when I go through the numbers, each one is selected. You'll also notice if I keep on hitting number one, this little selector down here keeps changing. What that is, is the select alternative tool. So if I choose split tool and then I hit command, you'll see it changes to the split tool. If I choose eraser and then hit command, you see it changes to the eraser. So that's like really useful when you're messing with say a region, for example. Let's open up an instrument track and create a region. So if I wanna cut something up real quick, and I can cut it up real quick. If I hit the one again, it's gonna take me to the erase tool. I could come in here and erase this one, erase this one. And then maybe I, I'd wanna copy these. Uh, the, the command for that is option. So then I could copy those like so. Let's delete that for now and keep it moving. Then of course we've got our info view. We've got audio band, strip silence. You'll use that for like vocals and stuff. Uh, quantize, your macros. Uh, you got all your quantize settings right here. Your time base, snap. This is where you turn your snap on and off. The key command for that is N. Uh, this is your auto scroll. And then your uh, cursor follows edit. So let's move down to the uh, transport. So you got your MIDI monitor. This is real helpful if you have like issues with ghost notes or you just want to see what's going on MIDI wise. You'll notice when I tap stuff on here, I'm seeing the inputs from my Akai. Then we've got our performance monitor. We don't have anything open right now, but if we did, we could go into show devices and see all the devices here and how much CPU they're using and so on and so forth. Uh, then we got our sample rate. When we got plugins open, we'll see our plugin delay total in milliseconds. Uh, we'll see our record time right here. I've got a really big hard drive, so my record time is, is pretty substantial. Uh, then you've got your counter right here. Uh, I have mine set to seconds. I like to see where I am time-wise in a session. So, you know, if I'm at bar three, I can see I'm at like five and a half seconds. That'll obviously change based on what your tempo is. Then you've got your locator. Uh, position right here on your transport. I have mine set to bars. So you got seconds, samples, bars, frames, so on and so forth. Then here's your main transport controls. Uh, stop, play, record, loop. Uh, this is your markers. If you create marker points, you can use this to shuffle through your markers. You can also use the numbers uh, on your number keypad on the right of your keyboard if you have that uh, to cycle through those markers. And I'll show you, I'll show you that more later. Then, of course, you got your fast forward and your rewind. That's also um, set up by default on the uh, number keys on the right. So, you know, fast forward and rewind would be plus and minus on the number keypad. Then, of course, you got your locator, your metronome, uh, your time signature, what key you're in, the tempo. If you want to tap tempo, you can just tap the word tempo and it'll change your tempo. I'm going to go ahead and control Z to undo that. And I want to change this back to split since I use that the most. Uh, then, of course, you got your metronome right here. Let's get into that. So uh, if you want to customize your metronome, you hit this little wrench and you can get in here and customize your metronome settings. If you don't want to use the metronome on the transport bar, you can actually render your metronome settings to an audio track, which is kind of cool. Uh, but then key command wise for the metronome, if you want to turn the metronome on, that's C. 
if you want to turn your pre-account uh, for the metronome on, that's shift C and you should see that at the bottom on my key commands. And then let's get into this little option bar on the record panel. So here's all your audio uh, record options and then here's your instrument record options. So if you want to uh, record audio and every time it loops, you want to replace the audio that you previously recorded, you'll set it to replace. If every time it loops, you want to record a new take to a layer, you choose this option and it'll do that. And then of course you got input quantize. Uh, same thing for instrument, you could record takes or record mix. We'll just mix the recordings onto the same region. So let's say you, uh, you have it set to three bars and let's go ahead and set this up right now. So let's say it's looping right now when you're recording and you hit a snare drum here and you hit a snare drum here and then it records and, and loops again. Then you could lay the kick down and it'll just keep on recording the same uh, region repeatedly and it'll add to it as opposed to replacing it. And then we got note repeat. So basically uh, if I open up note repeat, you can see some of the options here. We can actually uh, have maybe we had hi-hats down here or something and then we can hit the keys on the keyboard to change what note repeat we're in kind of like on an MPC or something like that, but uh, it's a little bit more rigid in my opinion inside of studio one, but still useful. All right. So let's get into the browser now. So over here you look, you see, we got instruments, effects, loops, so on and so forth. Uh, you highlight, you can actually get to all of them right there, or you can just hit them up here. Uh, you're pretty much mostly going to use instruments, effects, and files and pool. I barely ever use cloud or, or loops. This is all for like the default studio one content I, I never use that stuff you might use it there might be something cool in there I, I really don't mess with it though and then so uh you know if you want to get to your effects here's all your effects i like to organize mine by vendor uh because it's just a lot easier to see the different manufacturers of the plugins as opposed to you know type is gonna organize it by like audio units and you know so on and so forth I, or even folder uh it's just it, it's better on vendor in my opinion if you go flat it's just Everything's all over the place. Uh, vendor to me is nice and organized. It's much easier to, to find what I'm looking for quickly. And then of course, instruments, same way. Vendor, just easier that way. Let's go ahead and close this back up. And the next thing I want to cover is track colors. I use this all the time and I wish I wish more people did, um, especially when you're, you're sending a session to somebody and things are colorized already. Uh, it just makes it so much easier to see what's going on and, and know what's what just by using the colors. Um, the colors in Studio One are, are a little bit, eh, to me, I tend to use the the more bold, bright colors and, and I kind of stay away from these more pastel looking colors, but uh, definitely use these colors. Let's say, uh, let's go ahead and duplicate this track. Uh, this is an option that we covered earlier in the uh, in the settings and the preferences and whatnot. And we were talking about a folder track. So if we put something in the folder, like pack folder, uh, and see how the folder has its own color, let's expand that. You see how everything in here is that color now. Now you could, if you wanted to, come in here and create in independent colors uh, for the folder itself. But I personally like having everything that's in my pack folder be the same color. And you saw that it, it changed the colors of the tracks once I packed them in a folder. But again, like I said, if you want, you can come in here and change those after the fact. They don't have to be uh, like that. So let's go ahead and delete this because we don't need it. And let's get into uh, key commands. So let's come up here to Studio One and go to Keyboard Shortcuts. And this is where you're going to set all your key commands. So uh, let's say you know you wanted um, your cycle or your loop to be a specific key command. So if we type in cycle... Or maybe it's actually under loop in Studio One. And here it is right here, toggle loop. All right, so this is set to the number pad or backslash uh, on mine. I'm not sure if that was the default or if I set that up myself, but I know it like the back of my hand. So definitely come in here and customize your key commands to suit your workflow because it'll be a major enhancement. So make sure you do that. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention earlier when we were in here looking at the transport options is input quantize. If you want Studio One to quantize everything that you input into it, you want this option to be on. So let's say you're playing something on the keys or on pads. If you want Studio One to quantize that stuff, say like uh, uh, MPC does, then you want that option to be on and you want to choose whatever you want your quantize to be 
up here. So if you want to quantize everything to the 16th, then you need to make sure that your quantize is on. Input quantize. You can get to it down here. You can get to it up top. And then make sure you set your uh, quantize accordingly. Otherwise, make sure you turn that off. If you don't want everything to be stuck to the grid as you're recording it, then make sure you have that off. But, you know, it really depends on what you're recording. Like if you're doing um, samples, like if you're recording a sample, then you might want everything to be quantized automatically as you're recording it because you've already got the sample chop set up to fall a certain way. Whereas with drums, you know, that I'm going to definitely want manual control over and I'll go in there and nudge everything on my own, like I said. So, uh, you know, it just really depends on what you're doing at the time, but it's dope to have the option to do both. And now you know how. So I think that wraps up this section. So why don't we go ahead and get into how to sample in Studio One and I'll catch y'all on the next one.